Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. I'm your host, Terry. Today is uh, January 28th. I'm coming to you from uh, Greenup, Illinois at the Loves. This is uh, probably one of Lyle's favorite Loves because it has a naff naff in it. And I'm gonna get some, I just finished driving. Drove over here from uh, from Cumberland, Maryland, where I stopped yesterday morning. And uh, I'm gonna probably do, I can deliver the load I got anytime, but I think I'm probably gonna wait. I'm delivering over in Edwardsville, Illinois. I think that's about probably like 125 miles from here somewhere around now now what am i saying i don't think yeah maybe 125 sorry uh and i'm gonna just I, i'm probably gonna get up around zero three and head over there in the morning so that i'm delivering first thing monday morning because i think if i just did 10 and i head over there i'm just gonna be sitting i'm gonna have to split my clock um i i mean i guess i could go deliver get a 10 in um so i might have to reconsider i might be able to deliver get a 10 in and then get a load so i'll have to think about it but anyway today's the 28th of january um a lot of interesting stuff happened on this day in history uh first thing 1986 the shuttle Challenger explodes shortly after takeoff from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, 1986. That's the shuttle flight that Krista McAuliffe, the school teacher, was on. Um, what else happened on this day? Oh, in 814, 814, the first Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne, uh, was died on this day in 1814. He was a Holy Roman Emperor. He was King of the Franks, King of the Lombards. So, um, so Franks were like present day France. Lombard is in, um, Lombardy is in, uh, Italy, but he, um, he was the first Holy Roman Emperor kind of, uh, he, he was a powerful person. And uh, he's also called Charlemagne the Just, though. Um, what else happened today? Um, oh, Pride and Prejudice, the book, was released on this day. It was it was released anonymously, and it was immediately a hit. Um, so, and 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 the role of Elizabeth Bennett was created for Kira Knightley. Uh, what else happened today? I'm trying to think. I think there was a couple of interesting birthdays, but they're slipping my mind. Um, maybe because I'm just tired. Um, all right. So I had um, <laughs> I had an interesting day on Friday. So I delivered Friday morning and uh at aldi in frederick maryland so i didn't have a load right away and i was like well i'll just do a 10 here at aldi and then based on what i see i'll run the load whatever load i get or i'll I'll go home for a little bit because it's not very far from where I live. So I got a load out of Hershey, but I could pick it up anytime until like midnight on Friday. And that's the load I'm on now, but it's got a long lead time. So I was like, all right, well, I'll go home and hung around the house, uh, played cards a little bit, took a nap, you know, just putzed around. And, uh, so about six on Friday evening, I got my wife to give me a ride down in my truck and 
with some groceries she bought for me while I was napping. And I get to the truck and I always leave my parking lights on. That's my habit. Unless I'm shutting my truck down, I always leave my parking lights on. They're on right now. I always leave them on. That's something I learned from my first trainer and it served me well. So, and it, it, so I, anyway, I get to the truck and you know, I'm talking to my wife. I'm not paying too much attention. And I start to, but I had split my clock. I split my clock. So I got about seven hours at home. I'm like, okay, I'll go pick this load up. Then I'll just run it for a while. And then I'll take a break. And I actually thought I would deliver um, this morning. So uh, anyway, I get... I, you know, I put all my stuff in the truck and I get, and I'm starting to look around and I'm like, why aren't my trailer lights illuminated? Cause the tractor lights were illuminated. So I put my, put all my stuff in the truck. I started looking around and then I realized that the, so I start basically doing a pre-trip and my flashers work, my directionals work, and the top lights on the trailer. And remember, this was one, this, well, I shouldn't say remember, I'll tell you. This was one of the L.W. Miller trailers, one that starts with an R. And um, so I was like, the lights on top, and they have a few more lights um, on those trailers than we do on the original prime trailers. Like for instance, they have a, they have amber, uh, corn lights on the lower corner. Um, they also have an amber light in the middle along the top rail of the trailer. So a few extra, uh, lights on those trailers, but all the lights on the bottom and the back door, the running lights are out. So I start messing around with stuff. I'm checking my seven pin connections, both ends, um, looking for, you know, just anything obvious. So I call, I call, or I send a message to Road Assist. Now, last time I had this running light problem on a trailer, it turned out that one of the pins on the trailer was like bent and they had to take apart the the connection box where you plug in the seven pin. So I was like, and and let me let me say this. I and I don't want to sound like I'm an impatient person. I don't want to sound like I think I'm smarter than everyone. But I was talking to another driver and I said why is it when there's a problem that these RA people assume that you haven't bothered to check anything? Like you just were pointed at your truck and said, I got nothing. Like you didn't try to check anything. Um, nothing occurred to you. No, no troubleshooting, no trying to figure out any of these problems. And they always ask every, they always ask questions and they don't do it all in one message either. They always ask questions like, like, did you check your seven pin? Is your cable plugged in? You know, it's like, I never unplug the seven pin. Cause again, I leave my parking lights on, but I would never unplug the seven pin or disconnect airlines or anything. If I'm not dropping a trailer, that's the only time I ever do that. And, you know, it's like, oh, are your lights turned on? Yeah, my lights are turned on. Yeah, I, the cable's still there. And I did check the cable because I wiggled it around to see if maybe it was one of those pins. So anyway, I got all the stupid questions and they're like, oh, somebody will be there in a half an hour to an hour. I'm like, okay. So in about an hour and 20 minutes, I was like, well, I'm going to follow up. And uh, right as I start to send a message, a truck rolls up. So out of the truck jumps two guys that I'm pretty sure were playing video games with their girlfriends 
their 16 year old girlfriends because these guys looked like they were 17. Um, and then they put on their spiffy brand new like shirts that had reflective stripes and have a patch that says their name. And so anyway, and and let me say this, I it, it's, well, I'm not even gonna say it. So anyway, two like really young guys, like I am not joking, neither of them has ever worn a razor out. That's how young looking these guys were. And their uniforms were like brand new, like they just got them today type of thing. I'm like, all right, you know, usually I like a, usually I like a guy that looks a little more experienced. Maybe he's got grease on his shirt that never washed out. I like that guy to show up when I got trouble. But anyway, you, you got to play the hand you're dealt, right? So I ex I explain to these guys what the problem is, and I tell them all my observations, all the things I've checked. So they start checking things. They start digging into fuse boxes and then they finally decided the fuse box they wanted to dig in was the one under the dash here, under the driver's side. So they're putzing around, they're talking to each other and you know, I'm not really paying much attention to what they're doing. I'm like eating some dinner because now it's not six o'clock or quarter to six when my wife dropped me off. Now it's like eight. So you know, and I, it was a drop and hook, so I wasn't too worried. And um, so anyway, I, um, I, you know, they're doing their thing. And then all of a sudden the one guy's like, hey boss, uh, come check this out. And he wants to show me that the lights are working. So the first thing I do when I get out is I'm like, oh, that's, that's nice, except for not all the lights are working. And, but I was like, but I'll look around. So I get out of the driver's side of the truck. I start walking down the left side. And the first thing I notice is the middle light, the lower light, that marker slash directional light, uh, the amber one on the, on the driver's side is not working. I was like, oh, this light's not working. So then as I walk around the back, I see, okay, my tail lights are on, my marker lights on the top are on. Okay, cool, that's good. And then I look at the, the right lower corner, uh, you know, at the back of the truck, or back of the trailer, and there's like smoke coming out. And I'm like, whoa. So I look under there real quick, and like, I realize that the light fixture itself is on fire. So I run back around the driver's side of the truck and I run up here to um, the front of the trailer and I pull the seven pin out so it cuts the power off. And I'm like, dang. And and I said, so what, what did you guys do to get these working? And that's when the guy tells me, oh, he, <laughs> I'll show you a picture of the light fixture here in a second. But he says, yeah, so we found a 10 amp fuse that was blown, but we, um, and we replaced it with it. No, I took it back. We found a 15 amp that was blown and we replaced it with another 15 amp, but that blew right away too. So we put a 25 in it and it made the lights work. And I'm like, Our, and so then the like, chief electrician's mate in me came out because that's what I originally did in the Navy. I did lots of stuff, but I was, my rating was I was an electrician's mate. And so <laughs> I'm like, so I said to this kid, um, so here's the deal, man. I said, if you have a f blown fuse, and you replace it. I'm just watching this guy back blindside in here, but he's going like 17 miles an hour. Yeah, you need to pull up, buddy, before you gore my trailer. Um, <laughs> it's like, dude, what is the hurry about backing in that space? Holy shit. 
Uh, anyway, I, um, I, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought is what happened. So I said, look, when, when a fuse blows, okay, you change it. But when that one that's the correct rating, the correct amperage blows immediately, you can't just say, oh, well, let me just put a bigger one in there. Because I said, eventually, you're going to get to the point where you got like, you just jammed a penny in there. And here's the thing. If that, fur, if that fuse blew the first time, it means there's a problem with the circuit. Just because you can get a fuse that's that's two-thirds larger to work doesn't mean there's still not a problem with the circuit as evidenced by the fact that this light is on fire well what had happened out here's a picture of the light and you'll notice like the light fixture itself is burnt up but the wire beside it had the insulation had rubbed off and it was shorting out against the chassis against the metal on the trailer so take a look So I'm like, look, you guys got to clear this. You know, you can't just leave a short to ground or a short, whatever you want to call it, in place. I said, so let, I said, just, can you replace that light? Oh, we don't have any of those. And I'm like, why would you be doing a service call and not have some spare parts? So anyway, we, we took basically took the light off and and then I said okay but we still got a problem with this amber marker slash directional light now the crazy thing on that light was that it was blinking but you know there's a couple different wires going to it so they one of the guys crawls under and he, he finds that that wire has rubbed and actually split the insulation rubbed off and then it just corroded and broke so they put a splice on that so anyway i give a very detailed report to ra and they're like you know like they don't get back to me right away but now i'm like okay now i gotta go get this trailer washed out and then i gotta go to the pickup and really what i was hoping ra would say is oh well we'll just because this is a place where there's tons of prime trailers and i'm like i'm sure that they have somebody that can go out there with the right parts or and replace this light while it's while the trailer's just sitting there um because they do that at a lot of locations but he's like no you can't take that trailer there you either got to go to t and i get this message as i'm getting the trailer washed out you either got to go to TA, Petro, or, you know, take it to the terminal. Well, here's the deal with TA and Petro. It, by this time, it's like, it's probably 10 o'clock by this time. Because by the time we got done messing around with, with the boys, it was like 9-ish. It took me an hour to get to the washout. So it's like 10 or a little bit after. And I'm like, you know, it's... 10 o'clock on a Friday night, if I go to TA, and there's there's a Petro right there where I was getting the washout in Carlisle, and they have a shop. I've, I've been there one other time, but I'm like, if I go there, there's going to be, maybe there's going to be one mechanic, and he's going to have three other trucks in front of me. So I was like, you know what? Even though it's 200 miles out of the way, beyond my 01, it's like, it's 104 miles to Pittston beyond my 01. So it's 208 miles round trip. But I say, okay, I'm just gonna take this to Pittston and get rid of it. I, it, you know, let them fix it. And the other thing is when I picked this trailer up, the landing gear wouldn't crank all the way up. There was about this much of the shaft and then the pad on, sticking out, it wouldn't crank all the way up. So I'm like, you know what? They can just, they can just fix the light, fix the landing gear. I'll have it off my back, and and if I can find a a trailer that's roadworthy, I'll grab it. If not, I'll probably just bobtail down to the 01. So anyway, they they got a trailer, but when I got up there, of course, it took forever. They wanted to do a courtesy check, and I'm like, I don't want a courtesy check. 
They're like, well, this trailer ha is gonna have to go to the sh I'm like, I know, that's why I'm here. Just, <laughs> I honestly, it took me 40 minutes to get through inbound. But anyway, it, it, just for them, yeah, it's frustrating. So I drop the trailer, I get a new, I, I get one assigned to me and I get it, you know, I get it attached to me. But I was like, by that time I was like starving. So I stopped, I went and got something to eat and then I get my trip, I go over to the pad and get my trailer. And then I head for the, for the O1 and I pick up. So I was like really pretty late, but it worked out fine. But you know, yeah, it was it, it was just kind of it was just kind of frustrating. So I'm gonna talk to my I'll, I'm gonna talk to my fleet manager on Monday. I'm gonna get shuttle pay for dragging that trailer all the way up there. And um, I I don't like those trailers any the, any trailer that begins with the letter R I'm not interested in. Um, so I I got a good trailer on my back that I picked up, and even the trailer that I took to the O1 was was pretty squared away so that's just a day in the life right and uh yeah so i'll deliver this um i'm not doing great this week but i'll deliver this and then hopefully be out in springfield to get some work done on this truck one of the things and i am mind boggled that this has happened because it, it just speaks to the total lack of quality of these trucks. I mean, so I have, and I, and I will admit, I kind of got talked into this because I have a friend who said, we, we were talking one day when I was getting ready to order this truck and he's like, man, I'm just, I, I just got this fear of burning up, you know? And I'm like, yeah, cause you know, I was probably being a smart ass. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm not afraid of burning it up at all. Um, and, and I, he's like, yeah, that's why I, I would order one of those doors, you know, escape doors. And I kind of look at my sleeper, you know, and I'm like, I, I don't know about the escape door. I mean, I guess if the truck was in a wreck and you were in the sleeper, um, you know, let's say someone else is driving and they clobber a couple of trees like I, I've seen some trucks in the woods recently in Pennsylvania, you know. I guess that door would come in handy if the truck is on the path, you know, like if the truck rolled over and it's on the passenger side, then that door will work. Um, if the truck is pinned in between trees and both doors are crushed, you know, like the trucks because uh, I, I just saw a truck in trees like that um, although oftentimes when these trucks hit almost anything hard they just they just split open like a can I mean the, the, it's like the pop it's it's like the uh, it's like the um, Pillsbury biscuit thing where you take the you take the one sheet of paper off and you just whack it against the counter Pfft and the whole thing comes <laughs> unraveled. That's kind of what these trucks look like after they hit a tree. Um, but I, so anyway, I got the door. Long story short, I got that door. And the and the other day when I was out in Illinois, I was driving and, and I had noticed when I was sleeping, I was like, man, this truck is drafty. And air pours in the hole where the CB goes up here. I got plastic bags and a hat. Here's my hat. I mean, I stuffed my hat in there, but I also like it's, it, 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 it slows the cold air down, but it's also where I store that hat. But when I was in the sleeper, I would feel like if I put my hands up above my head, I would feel like this draft, you know, I'm like, man, this truck is drafty. And so then I was driving and I was like, man, it sounds like there's a window open back there. So I, you know, when, then when I stopped, I went and I double checked. Well, then I was fueling and I, and I looked at that door and I was like, man, that thing does not look like it's closed tight. So I open up, it was locked. 
So I open it up and I slam it and push it. And this thing is moving like probably a half an inch. It seemed like it had about a half an inch of play in it. Like, mm -mm -mm. So, so I go inside and I ended up, and you probably can't see it behind me, but I got a bungee cord on that thing on where right above the latch, I got a bungee cord that's going to the straps on my microwave, which is right up here. And it's still, it still is not completely tight. So I gotta get that stupid thing fixed. And again, that just bugs the crap out of me because that's just crap components, crap craftsmanship and I, I really wish I hadn't gotten that door, but really it just illustrates that I don't know why anybody in their right mind wants to pay extra more money for a Peterbilt when you could get like a Freightliner. I mean, I, 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 I after having this, and, and I was, I, I'm planning on doing a whole video on this, but I saw a video on the 579s and, and people were commenting, ooh, it's so nice, it's so spacious. And I put a comment and I said, the Peterbilt 579 is the truck for people that don't actually drive trucks for a living. And the, the person who did the video put a thumbs up, you know, cause they were just, they know what I'm talking about. And this truck rides better and, I, and I'm pretty confident it's better on tires but a lot of the stuff, so those are the good points, but a lot of this stuff is just substandard. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. I got a leak in here where I where the CB goes. There's a leak in there. I also have a leak here. You can see my little, um, my little lanyard here or whatever for my, uh, for my air horn. There was a leak coming down there. It's, it's like Peterbilt is, n anybody who says that Peterbilt is better than another brand, they're full of it. Peterbilt is different than other brands, but it's definitely not better. And even people buying 389s that are like, if, if, if it's a new 389, it's, it, I guarantee it's not better than, you know, it's different. Uh, based on what I see in this truck, it's different. That's it. So anyway, I'll do another video on that and I'll just go over everything. Um, and you be the judge. I'll report, you decide. And again, some people love these things, but for me, it ain't all that. It really isn't. Um, you know, yeah, it's just, um, it's just not that impressive, and um, and the f and and some of the features I got on here, I think I could get on a on a um, could get on a Freightliner, and uh, you know, and don't get me wrong, this thing has been reliable in terms of like engine power, you know, tr powertrain. It's been good on tires, but there's a lot of stuff that leave a leaves a lot to be desired um but i'll do a more uh, a more detailed uh look at that anyway uh be safe out there uh i don't know when the winter thaw is going to be over a lot of rain on the east coast right now and uh i thought i would hit some mis mixed precipitation but i didn't today um i thought i would hit some going through indianapolis because i saw snow on the radar but nothing happened so guess I, i'm lucky and i will talk to you guys soon bye